two books that I remember loving as a kid were Kidnapped and Treasure Island. I can still remember the uh, or picture or get a sense of the atmosphere that, that uh, I uh, loved in those books. All I ever wanted to do when I grew up was to be an artist. Um, and drawing is something that I've always loved doing. The other thing I wanted to do as a kid uh, was to go to England. I was interested in castles and knights and uh, pirates and pirate ship and was fascinated by time. And I think England, um, England uh, suggested all those things to me as a little boy. I felt that that's where things were. That's where castles were or, and pirates came from. It was never an ambition to do kids' books. I was, um, asked, I was doing drawings for the age. And so a bloke would come out on a motorbike and give me the text and say, well, this is the size, and I'd have a couple of hours to do the drawing. Unfortunately, the drawings were about subjects that I knew nothing about economics or politics. So what I'd do is I'd do a really weird drawing and then pick a line of text and sit next to it, and people would think that it was being ironic, but I really just didn't know. But, but the point is that that gave me a sense of uh, an image with a line of text. But then someone asked me in the early 90s to illustrate a kid's book that someone had written, and I did that, and I rather liked it. I find it very easy or natural or intuitive to um, create characters and then imbue them with a personality. So once I've established a character, whether it's old Tom or Mr. Badge or Mr. Chicken, it's irresistible to create a story around them or a scenario. Put them in a context or out of context like Mr. Chicken in Paris, a ridiculous looking creature in this beautiful city. I actually thought of Mr. Chicken going to Paris when I was in the bookshop of the Louvre and I thought how marvellous if he came here. And I, in the Louvre I did a couple of quick little sketches, literally seven or eight lines, Mr. Chicken on the Eiffel Tower and in a bus, tourist bus. When I came back, showed them to my editor and she said, there's a book in that, just do it. But it was, it was a love of Paris. I mean, how could you not, not uh, think that place is marvellous? As far as if I have an audience in mind, um, it's there, it's somewhere in my head, I'm aware of it, but I don't let them get in the way of how I feel um, the story should go or how the character should act. Because I don't think you can write with, I think don't you can create with something sitting on your shoulder. You'll end up worrying about being politically correct or whatever. I mean, what I am aware of are people's sensitivities. I think you can't not be aware of, of that. But by nature, I wouldn't put anything in the books that um, would offend people anyway, you know, because it's not funny. Uh, and I don't sit out to be funny in the books, but I don't know, there's something that ends up, I suppose, people, you know, I suppose with a character like Mr. Chicken, I could hardly say it was, you know, serious. In the books that I do, the words say something different to the picture. I never echo in the text what it does in the picture. And the combination is a third meaning. So in the old Tom books, Angela Throgmorton one day is doing the vacuuming and she hears a knock at the door. She goes to the door, looks outside, and there on the, bay, the doormat, you see a basket with old Tom in it. But the text says there on her doorstep was a baby monster. So she picked him up and carried him in. So the picture is what the kids see. The text is from the adult's point of view. Kids, they're very brainy. Right from the word go, they know that what I'm saying is that this woman thinks of him as her child. She's adopted him. And that to me is the irresistible thing about doing kids' books, that I'm in charge and create this whole world kids are privy to without, you know, uh, patronising them because they have to strive a bit, you know. My best time of the day is the morning. I get up very early. 
my working environment is pretty chaotic in fact. There's a certain sort of chaos. So I actually love the feeling of paint and ink and stuff. Inevitably, it boils down to me sitting in a chair with a drawing board on my lap. And the drawing board that I use, in fact, is the drawing board that, as a five-year-old, I'd sit up in bed and draw on. It's just, I'm so used to it. It's got nearly 60 years of scribbles on it. I use uh, pen and ink. I never do sketches in pencil. I never go over things because I rely on uh, the freshness of the line. I work hard, actually, to make it look easy. I have a, a, a flurry of activity where I'm in, I feel inspired and enthusiastic. Then inevitably it dries up. That doesn't worry me now because I'm aware of the rhythm of it. Um, so what I do now is just go to my sketchbook and just draw my way out of it. And what it is is somehow it's, it's exquisite, that moment when your eye and your head and your brain and your hand are all working all working, it's a real marvellous partnership and you're off. Forget about the hard work or the what some dumb critic says. And that's the thing that brings you back to it, or with me. What I'm currently working on is the third Mr Chicken book. Uh, he's going to Rome. It's an irresistible combination for me to have this mad character in this fantastic place. And of course, it gives me the chance to really have a go at doing elaborate drawings of the Trevi Fountain and you know, the Colosseum and all the other, you know, St. Peter's, but with Mr. Chicken somewhere in it. I still get letters from parents and kids and sometimes funny photos with their, their little kid standing in front of the Arc de Triomphe with holding up a picture of Mr. Chicken at the Arc de Triomphe, so. And I love the idea that by the end of the book, whoever reads it can actually feel a little bit of the enthusiasm. You know, I'd, I, like, I would like to think that I can generate a bit of enthusiasm for these places somehow.